Good afternoon. I've already got that, uh, you know, so I'm going to be very short here. Uh, so I would like to thank the organizers, FAM and AIMS, to invite me on behalf of my company to present, make this presentation. I must say that what I'm going to present is really the work of uh, decades which has been done by different scientists in L'Oreal, and it is, it is an honor for me to come and talk about this work. I would also uh, like to acknowledge uh, one fact that I'm an AIMS alumni. I received my PhD in the same uh, auditorium long time back, working on leprosy with Professor Indranath, who is present here in the auditorium today. So um, I would just, uh, in my presentation, give a brief, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a very brief introduction in French, because uh, most of the audience speak English, and most of my presentation will be in English. Alors, le but de ma présentation est de vous montrer comment, face à la diversité des besoins des consommateurs du monde entier, nous nous mobilisons pour répondre par la recherche, le développement de la connaissance et les innovations technologiques en créant les produits de demain dont la performance sera perçue par les consommateurs. Aujourd'hui, j'ai choisi le cas particulier des peaux indiennes et des désordres pigmentaires. So, uh, the famous anthropologist Nina Jablonski, her work has elaborated the evolution of skin pigmentation in, in various populations. So, human skin pigmentation is a product of two clients produced by natural selection to adjust the level, levels of constitutive pigmentation to levels of UV radiation. One client was generated by UVR near the equator and led to evolution of dark, photoprotective, eumelanin-rich pigmentation. The other was produced by a requirement for UVB photons to sustain cutaneous photosynthesis of vitamin D in low UV environment and resulted in evolution of depigmented skin. As hominins dispersed outside of tropics, they experienced different intensities and seasonal mixtures of UVA and UVB, and the different colors emerged. And again, this is very nicely shown by Professor Jablonski, who also sits in the scientific advisory board at L'Oreal. It's fascinating to see that uh, the, the, the slide that you're seeing here is, is the distribution of radiation. It's a map of NASA, and it almost reflects the distribution of skin color all over the world. So I would just briefly talk about the, the pigmentation in the Indian context. So Indian population repre represents a fascinating mosaic of skin colors, and the Indian subcontinents represent greatest diversity of skin tones, ranging from lightest to darkest tones. So those of you attended the L'Oreal Symposium during the lunch hour must have got the details of the studies done at L'Oreal. Here, I would just briefly touch upon our studies. So we carried out studies on more than 1,000 Indian women across four Indian cities to understand skin complexion and pigmentary disorders. They involve objective measurements and evolution of the biodermatologist clinically or from photographs. It's quite obvious that there's a difference in skin complexions according to geographical location. We see a variation in north in Delhi and much darker skin tones in Chennai. So um, one of the problems uh, of Indian population is frequent occurrence of hyperpigmentation disorders a point that was again evoked in, in the session during lunch hour, so I will not go into the detail. But I would just say that melasma affects about 30% of the middle-aged women in India, but many other ill-defined pigmented macules were observed in our study. So it is clear that one of the factors that plays a major role towards development of this heterogeneity of color is environment. B is solar radiation, in particular UVA, latitude, but also some more other phenomena such as pollution. And there is also a major contribution of physiological changes due to age. I would just touch upon the genomics of, of uh, pigmentations. Dr. Thierry Passeron talked about the zebrafish in the morning session. And this is indeed the animal that has contributed a lot 
uh, to understanding the genetics of pigmentation, the first gene SLC was identified in a lighter variation of zebrafish and since then it has been a topic of intense research to associate skin color, hair color and eye color with different genetic factors. Indeed, a very interesting study on the Indian population was published in Nature in 2009, uh, which was titled as uh, Reconstructed Indian Population History. And indeed, in this study, there was a clear genetic diversion in ancient North Indian populations and the ancient South Indian population. So obviously, genetics has an important to role to play, and which is because of uh, it's, it's being an evolutionary phenomena. I will now go on to the second part of my presentation and I will again begin with a brief introduction in French because this is about how at L'Oreal we have developed different research strategies and tools to understand uh, this uh, various diversity of skin types. Face à ces observations, il était essentiel de comprendre l'origine de ces désordres pigmentaires avec l'espoir de concevoir les technologies plus efficace, euh, plus efficace de demain pour prévenir et ou corriger des désordres de l'apparence des personnes. Pour aborder ce domaine, notre recherche a développé depuis dizaines d'années deux approches complémentaires. L'utilisation des peaux humaines reconstruites pigmentées et la recherche clinique associée aux techniques de la biologie moderne comme les omics. Pour comprendre la fonction pigmentaire et son évolution au cours de vieillissement, mais aussi qui se cache derrière l'apparition des taches brunes, par exemple l'indigo ethnique. So basically, in this slide, we are talking about the two major technologies that L'Oréal Research has been concentrating on. Uh, first one is the development of reconstructed skin models. These are the 3D models. More and more, we are learning that. Uh, mono layers of cells or even the 2D cultures do not reflect the actual physiological phenomena. However, when you grow these cells in a 3D environment, and I don't know if you've heard the latest technologies on bioprinting and organoids, this is the very idea. When you have cells in the 3D conformation, they are very close to the, the organ that they are representing. So we have been culturing monocytes in a 3D matrix where they are not only in touch with the, the keratinocytes, which are you know, epidermal cells, but we have also been successful in constructing the superficial dermis and therefore the effect of fibroblast on all the phenomena associated with aging and uh, pigmentation. And the second important technology that we have embraced at L'Oreal is the omics. It could be genomic transcriptomic or proteomics. So these are the tools which help us in understanding the underlying, underlying biological mechanisms uh, in physiologically healthy skin. We have always collaborated with scientific experts as well as medical fraternity uh, throughout the world. One of our classic collaboration has been with the L'Hôpital Militaire de Percy à Clermont on burns. And we have extensively worked on pigmentation disorders such, such as xeroderma pigmentation, uh, pigmentosum. And this was a knowledge study which was conducted for many, many years with CNRS. So as you know, this disorder, in this, the people suffering from xeroderma pigmentosum, they lack nucleotide excision repair. So their ex skin is extremely sensitive to UVA because they lack the basic DNA repair mechani uh, me mechanism and they develop skin tumors, mostly basal and squamous cell carcinomas arising from epidermal keratinocytes and malignant melanomas. So thanks to our re 3D reconstructed skin technology, we have tried to understand the effect of UV exposure or sometimes you know, finding ways to correct these basic inherent disorder in these patients. So we have been taking fibroblast from the patients suffering from xeroderma pigmentosum and have re reconstructed the entire 3D skin. And on, on the right hand side, you see that when we reconstructed a skin model with the XP patient fibroblast, the, the histology shows the invaginations which are very much reminiscent of what is observed with actinic lentigo. So this has also enhanced our own knowledge of understanding the, the effect of 
you know, diseased or aged fibroblasts. So in addition to organotypic approach, where we directly look at the skin sagging and other, uh, you know, um, symptoms, uh, we have taken actylic lentigo as a model system to really understand the biological mechanisms behind pigmentation. And um, what are the different skin compartments that are affected in this condition? And as I told you, we have taken a transcriptomic approach in trying to uh, elic uh, elucidate some of these mechanisms. And to our surprise, one of the biggest factors, one of the biggest major factors in having this effect on the pigmentation has been the fibroblast. So fibroblast, it appears, is the conductor which is uh, working from underneath, from the superficial dermis, and it contributes in a major way to the superficial symptoms that we see uh, with skin aging or with pigmentation. And this know-how has been developed by taking many, many different approaches. For instance, we make reconstructed skin only with melanocytes and keratinocytes. There are no fibroblasts. We observe a certain pattern and we make our observations and conclusions. We then take fetal and adult fibroblasts. We again reconstruct the skin and try to see what effect it has on the pigmentation. That led to some more revelation of the fibroblast in a normal physiological pigmentation process. Then we also took photo-aged fibroblast and we again reconstructed the 3D skin. And the rest of the cells like keratinocytes and melanocytes are coming from normal skin. And it appears that fibroblast has a major role to play, not only in enhancing, in controlling, first of all, the pigmentation, but also leading to many, many hyperpigmentation disorders uh, that manifest in so much in, in Indian population as well. So at that note, I will terminate now, and I hope I was short. Uh, so having generated this know-how, we use this information to conceive and bring out the products that will be correct uh, to, to address some of these uh, issues that concern our con consumers. So one approach would be protection against UV, and, uh, and the other approach would be developing actives which will protect skin against the oxidative stress. And I thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much, madam.